Thanks, Mr. Henry. Thank you very much. Um, I think we'll just get into taking the questions and answers so that we don't take up take up time. But that was very emotional just going through that. So does anybody have questions? Do we ask it here? Do we ask it in the chat? Questions? Oh, Sorry, their hands up. Yeah, I'm yeah, seeing who have their hands up. Okay, so I will, uh, hmm. okay, I will mute him. Hugo, Hugo, okay, I can't pronounce this. Hugo, please, let's unmute him. Let's hear from him. You cannot unmute himself. Oh, Hugo, Ad Adeline, I don't know. Can you hear me? Okay, somebody else. Um, Ken, I'm a Fideba. Sorry, sorry if I'm wondering your name. Sorry. Mr. Ken. Oh, gosh. I'm okay. Mute my, okay, I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, right. yes. I can hear you, Ken. Okay, great. Um, uh, beautiful presentation. I, for one, I've always, I've always felt that uh, the title father is the most important title in the world, better than chief doctor, professor, or anything. Now, uh, Ando said that um, we fathers have to be exemplary to our sons such that they know how to treat women. Also, to our daughters, so they know how women should be treated. My fear is this, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. We, if we set a very high standard, if we live these virtues very well to the extent that we set very high standards, there's no problem with our sons because they try if they emulate us, beautiful. But if we set very high standards and then our our daughters begin to expect men to match up to our standards, and there are not very many men who can match up to these standards, are they not disadvantaged? That is my question. Okay, Sarah, you want me to take the, the you want me to take no. the Excited that he can set the kind of standard that no other person can. can like, <laughs> okay. It's already amazing to imagine. Please go ahead. Okay, so 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 thank you, Ken. I, I think, look, the truth is that there are standards. There should be standards. And it's if you set standards that, that your children can follow, it, it's the best thing, actually. Um, what will happen with your daughters is that because of the way they see you behave, because of the way they see the things that you do, they know how to look out for the men that will be like you. All right? Um, so, for instance, I say, I say that when my wife comes back from the salon, having made her hair, I, I should have the decency to compliment her that her hair looks nice because she's Going to stay under the dryer, and I hear that dryer can be very, very hot for some hour or an hour, 30 minutes. And then she comes back looking beautiful, and then she's trying to get your attention to compliment her. When she compliments her, she's very happy. And you find out that daughters do the same. Now, when they go out and they interact with men, possible suitors, when they find men that do not compliment, um, and do not say those important words, please, thank you, I'm sorry, that you have taught them from home, then they stay away from those men. Don't be afraid to set in, set in high standards. I mean, the, the reason I'm sorry to say that our country is in the situation that we are in now is because we have failed to set standards. So don't be afraid to set standards. Um, it's, it's worse if you don't set those standards and your daughters go out there, and then they just take anything that comes. That is more dangerous. Um, so okay. my, my answer would be, don't be afraid to set, to, to have to stand and set. Don't be afraid to show that example. Um, and remember, you're, you're not telling them anything. They take what they see you doing, and they run with it. So don't, please don't be afraid to, to set those standards. Thank you. Okay, so I think we will take the questions and then maybe answer later. But what I even wanted to say is, y'all, it's a blessed day. 
if your daughter, instead of choosing trash, just to keep with times, sets her standards very high, and because of that, you know, she has that um, limited choice that you think, then it's a blessing. One of the things with the problems of marriage is that people just get married to anybody. There's really no, there's nothing you're looking for. You just get married to anybody. So I think that's is a blessing if you can give her that, to give her the kind of person she's looking for. So we'll take the questions and then um, we'll answer them later. Mr. Henry, is that okay? Like we take three, four questions so that we don't Okay, okay? So just uh, I'm getting a bit uh, old now, so just keep the questions for me in case I lose anyone. Let's have three questions at once so that we can save time. Okay, three at once. That's fine. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Ubani, Chris, you can unmute yourself. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay. Um, thank you so much for the session. Um, quite, uh, quite insightful. All right. Um, so my question is uh, with respect to the first part, you know, just pretty well after the introduction, when you talked about, um, you were trying to cite an example for, about a father, you know, for instance, coming back from work, you know, don't allow the frustration of the office or the work or whatever, you know, um, to be um, maybe displayed or something you know, affecting the children or something, if I had you right, you know, and uh, I was just trying to clarify, you know, based on a similar session which I've attended in the past, where the speaker, you know, had um, a flip of this, which is about, you know, as a father, don't try to be a superhero, you know, in, you know, balance your being an ideal father with also the reality of the day. Because the children you are going to train or your training is not going to live in an utopian world. They will live in a world where they will come back from work also with frustrations and so on. You know, yeah. so in, know. Yeah, dealing with that emotion and so on, and also trying to tell them the reality of being a man, you know, that these challenges will come, is how you deal with it, is your ability to also explain it, even if it's written all over your face, come back with you. You need to explain the situation and stay with the situation. Not really about the people that made it and so on, but it's about dealing with the situation and letting them know that those are all part of being a man. So that's the balance I was trying to clarify, you know, which one works so that, you know, we don't also paint a different story to children that wake up to see reality different from it. Okay, Mr. Harry, you have that? Yes. Okay, so we have, we have, we have the second question. Okay, so we go to, we'll keep it two at a time. Okay. Um, please, can you keep your questions concise? Please. Okay, so uh, Mr. Michael, please unmute yourself. Mr. Michael DJ, please unmute yourself. Mr. Michael DJ. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, yes, yes. Okay, now, um, my question is, um, with the social political development of modern day uh, um, human rights, especially women's rights, and all that, I work in White Sands and I have observed an increasing sense of competition between men and women. And it's like a, a challenge to the father's, uh, if you call it, captainship of the ship. And this is likely also traced to the new economic power that women have acquired, which, in my opinion, is a good. Uh, I'm not saying that women should not make efforts and things they will come. But how can we teach, would I say, modern or younger couples that the father's headship of the house is natural, not essentially because he must earn more money. Of course, the truth is that all those are becoming challenges now that sometimes the man is any more than the man. Or, but the man is making an honest effort and all that. And because of it, the man appears subdued in making the decisions and correcting his children. For example, Henry has told us that he, he does justice. 
So how can we help younger people understand the, uh, this, that the age is a natural thing to the man and he needs all the support of his wife in order to play his role? Because what I noticed is that at the end, the, women, the men withdraw and let the women run the show, so to say. That's why you, when you accuse them of not being present at, uh, at the ETA meetings, at not being, the, their opinions are no longer regarded or valid. And they well, run the show how you like. But unfortunately, it doesn't work out well. But there's a reality we are dealing with now. Can we help do that? That's my question. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. Harry, I, you know, you have okay. that, right? Yes, yes. I want okay. to add a third woman that says, the, is, they sent a text. I just have a little question to ask. At what age in your son's life are you letting into the mistakes you did in the days of your youth so that they don't repeat it? So, okay. Okay. So let me, let me take the first question. Um, okay. So Ken, thank you for the question. So look, like you said, live, give and take, um, you have the good side and you have the bad side, but you have, so we, we often get bogged down by our work environment. When we go to the office, do you know that we try and we, we show our best side when we are in the office? We are at our best behavior when we are at our office. Even when we have frustrations and things, when we are in the office, we try and conceal it. Our children are very mal malleable, okay? It's important that your disposition uh, um, at home, it, it provides the tone in the house. And children are very, very observant, all right? So I'm not saying don't have frustrations. I'm not saying you won't have challenges. I'm not saying um, you go home and then you're dancing all over the place. I'm saying when you're coming home, your children are expecting their father. And so you must make an effort to come home with a bit of joy and happiness. Maybe after you've come, maybe some hour or two hours later, with your children at, at that age, you can tell them the challenges that you're facing, and you'll be surprised that sometimes they can come up with solutions. But I'm saying when you're going back home, it's important that your, your, your children see the cheerfulness of your going to work and the cheerfulness of your being happy that you're coming back home. Don't come home with a grim face. Okay, so yes, there are frustration, there are difficulties and challenges, but when you're coming home, work has just started. Your work in the office is a part-time job. Your full-time job is actually your being a dad and being a husband at home. It's important that we, we, we clarify, all right? You work, God has asked us to work, so you have to work in order to glorify God, but also you work in order to bring uh, the, the food back home. But know that in terms of your workplace, you don't have to work. You can work anywhere. You can spend one year in one place and you decide that this is not comfortable. You, you, you check out and go to another place. But you can't do that with your family and with your children. So where should you pay more attention to? It should be in the family and with your children. So go home happy all the time. But you can have that period when you share your frustrations and difficulties with your children. And when you have solved those difficulties and frustration, also remember to come back and tell them that you have sorted out the issues. They learn from the things that you do and the things that you say to them. Mike EJ's question, I don't know why Mike EJ is asking me, it was my colleague in White Sand and he's still there and there are many things that he's doing. Um, yes, Mike, and, and I agree with you. Um, unfortunately, a friend of mine says, it is what it is. The situations have become very bad. Um, the only thing we can do, as especially you as educators, is to keep talking to parents talking to men about the importance of their role in the home. There, there, there's no other way. We will have to resort to praying because, look, the truth about fatherhood and marriage is that there are things that came from God. It's not They're not man-made. So there's no man-made solutions you can... We'll have to probably go back and ask God to give us the grace to know how to navigate. But the thing is to talk about it at every possible opportunity. And for the men in the house to discuss this with our children. 
you cannot give up your God-given responsibility as a father. The mother can do a lot of things, but a mother can never be the head of a house. It's it's a it's a Yoruba say call it a mutonwa. It's something that was bestowed on you from heaven. <laughs> okay, it is your role. And like um, um, the actor Alex in Courageous said, don't take it lightly because when you get back to him, he's going to ask you a few questions that you need to answer. What did you do with your responsibility as a father? So it's not a joke. It's a, it's a, it's a weight that we carry on our shoulders. The mothers are there to help and support us. But primarily, the function of parenting is largely that of a father. And let's always put that in perspective. Sandra, what was the last, what was the third question? At what age do you introduce your children to mistakes you made in the past that you don't want them to repeat? Okay, so it, look, um, when 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 I was working in White Sands a few years back, we used to say that the age of reason was seven. But I know, Mike, will <laughs> know that right now, the age of seven is age of 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 reason, sort of. Um, the children at the age of four now they know a lot of things that we didn't know when we were even teenagers. Okay, so you. According to the ages of the children, you can tell them things that they will understand at those age level that they are in. Okay? So, you can, what you're saying to an 18-year-old boy is not the same thing that you'll be saying to a 6- or 7-year-old boy. They are different. So, you can't generalize. So, And that is why a father has to pay attention to his children and know them. There is an answer you'll give to one of your children and you'll be satisfied. If you can give that same answer to another of your child who has a different temperament, they will keep bothering you that you have not given it. So you have to know your children. And like I said, if you are not available, if you are not there, if you don't know their temperaments, if you don't know the school and what they are learning, you can't give answers. So as I say, you can't give what you don't have. You have to be the one uh, that knows all those things and the children will always come to you for answers. Okay, so um, fantastic. I'm particularly grateful that we have Parents First as a platform here because the truth of the matter is when we talk about how do you leave work at work, anger management is part of it and I know that's what we had done last we need to know how to present. It's not because, you know, Nigeria is Nigerian. Yeah. We will come into your house and be oh, a terror oh, to everybody. Oh, you know, it's oh. anger that is coming from somewhere else that hopefully, if you were here last time, you know, you would know how to manage this and come to your family the way you should. So it's basically emotional intelligence, and I urge everyone to strive for wisdom so that you present yourself as a better person at home too, uh, because um, and the, the second person also talked about the times. Yeah, we also didn't have that, um, what, the economic empowerment that the women had before, the whole feminist movement and stuff. But the truth is, if there's some shift like that, it also calls for us to review. You said it here, you plan, schedule, execute, and then you review. So I think it's time for fathers to review, okay, what have we been doing in the past? Maybe it worked for my father. Maybe it can't work for me now. So what then am I to do in this family? And if you are present enough in your family to think about what your role could be now that your wife is any more than you. So is your role just money? If you maybe you to ask yourself, I mean, you know, so I think it would also be a good platform to review your family. Like you said, have a family board meeting. Think about that. What do I offer as a father here? And don't take it lightly, because I'm sure even the woman would not be happy not to have a man in her house as the leader. I mean, so it's, it would be nice if you take that seriously. So we have two more hands up. Mr. Ikenna, as a movie, please, unmute yourself and ask a question. Thank you, Sandra. 
Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Okay, Harry, thank you very much for your presentation. Oh, the wonderful. My question is, um, from the presentation, um, one of the things you mentioned for us to be the father figure that we, our children need is for us to be available. Availability. Be involved in their <clears throat> everyday activities, their day-to-day -day activities, and know them well, and review their activities with their friends. So what, my question is this. What is your perspective with respect to sending kids to boarding school at a very young age? What impacts do you think that will have on the bonding that is required with fathers and parents? Okay, uh, Mr. Kenna, thank you for keeping that question concise. Um, Chidima, that's you, you're the last question. And that's what, Chidima. Hello? Is she here? Okay. I think if she's done, then we'll take from the chat. Um, okay. Mm. Anyway, I'd like to ask, I'd like your advice. Okay, one says we all want to provide the best of material things for our children. And most times this comes at the expense of quality time with them. How do we balance this? And one said, I'd like your advice for an adult daughter who hasn't any loving relationship with her biological father and any man at all. Having schooled in girls only school, she's more accustomed to relating with the female gender in a good way. But sees the male sex as just humans for the sake of God. Okay. Little or no trust. That's little or no trust for the yeah, well, yeah, okay. question is complicated. Anyway, okay, so so let me take yeah, it can ask question. It can thank you very much. Um, so your question is on body schools. I, I mean I don't want to hold brief for a day school, but I, I, I went to a day school. I, I have engaged so many times with many people who went to boarding schools and they say very good things about boarding schools. And, and it's true, those days, boarding schools were very, very good. But I think my, 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 my vote will be for, for day school. Um, Only this time. yes, for, for, see, the school is a help to the parents. What you do when you send your child, especially at an early stage, um, to a boarding school is that you surrender your parenting to the school. I mean, those days, in those days, the schools were quite good. I mean, you had the missionaries, um, who were, um, uh, managing the, the schools, the boarding schools. And maybe to ask you to do a bit of research and go and find out how boarding schools came to be, especially in Nigeria. Uh, boarding schools are not a creation of, of uh, it's a creation of, uh, 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 it's, it's from the UK. I mean, and they wanted, when they were, were colonizing us, and they wanted the quality, the qualitative kind of school that they had in their countries to be brought here, they brought those schools here. And because they didn't have time, they sent their ch children there to be able to get the best quality in terms of what they will get in their countries. So... Now, in, in the American system and some other European, they don't, they don't do boarding because the truth is that, see, the time that a child has to spend with a parent is short, actually, because you have only between when they are born and when they finish secondary school. Okay. So the first maybe three years, they go to they're in your house and they start nursery school, they go from primary school. Once they finish secondary school, they have left your home effectively. Now, if you have no, sent no, no. them to a boarding school, what happens is that all the things that you should have as an input in them as a parent, unfortunately, it doesn't get given. It doesn't get given. You know? Um, you can say, but they come back home on holidays and, and, and breaks and things. The time that you have with them is really short when that happens. And the truth is about it is that some of them get formed in many things that they don't show to you. You don't see 
when they come on holidays. So in as good as the boarding schools were there, and I remember those days, they said a lot of young, a lot of people who went to boarding school, my friends tell me that, look, it was in boarding school that they learned to cook. It was in boarding school that they learned to wash their clothes. It was in boarding school that they learned to interact with others. The truth is that all those things you have stated, they can be done at home. A child can learn how to cook at home. A child can learn how to wash at home. A child can learn how to interact at home and even in a more loving and relaxed way. Okay? Many students had very bad experiences in boarding schools. And in fact, you know that uh, the cultists and things that happen in schools happen in those places because the eyes of the parents are not there. So my advice will be, look, your children are just going to be with you between when they are born and when they have finish secondary school and say secondary school, they should finish secondary school around 15, 16 or thereabouts, after which they've left your house totally, absolutely. You have lost them. Whatever you have not been able to input uh, impact yeah, into them good. at that time is lost forever. And when they reach their teenage uh, years, what happens is that all those things that you have taught them when they were young and still children, they get challenged. That's when you have peer pressure. You have people telling them things that they've not heard before. You've had people challenging the things that they say they know, um, the fact that they go to church, the fact that they pray, the fact that they eat or act in a certain way, the fact that they are polite and nice. People, uh, people who have come from homes that haven't gotten that training influence them. So it's better that you're there to help um, solidify what it is that you taught them when they were young, because many of them can find themselves not being able to stand up to this peer pressure, and then they change in their ways and their characters. Which is why the I, I said I didn't want to go into this. Which is why this current syndrome of Jackpot is really, really, really bad, because when you surrender your fatherhood, your God-given duty, and you send your children to UK or US or Europe or Canada on the, I think I would say, flimsy excuses of giving them a better future tomorrow. If they don't have a solid today, there is no way that there can be a better tomorrow. And the only way they can have a solid today is with you guiding and directing them in the things that they do. And having face FaceTime on Facebook or WhatsApp call is not enough. That daily interaction you have with your children is very important. Is very important. And like I said, it's just for a little while. Before you know it, they have become adults and they've gone into, once they go and get into university, they have left your home forever and you will never have the opportunity again to put them in the right path. That's what I will say with regards to the boarding school. Sandra, please, the second question. What was the second question on? How do you balance the practical need to end and be available. Yeah, so so look, you, you had that movie on Courageous, you should see it. Look, <laughs> the truth is, at the end of the day, um, um, what you buy your children or the things you give your children through money is not important. In fact, if I ask all of, if I ask some of us in the house now, if you, what do you remember about those good old days? Do you remember the toys or the food or, no. What you will probably remember are those interactions when you went out with your dad or you did something with your mom. Or those are the things you remember. You don't remember the things that they buy for you. Now, I know education has become expensive, but there's still education that you can send your children to eh, that is affordable. The problem is that even at adult oh. age, many of us still fall under peer pressure. Because my maker's children are going to a Darwin College or whatever college, you want your own children to go there. Meanwhile, it's not affordable, all right? So our, our rat's race about wanting to make money, um, it comes short because I've seen many parents that they have so much money, but they've lost their children because they just weren't there to put their children aright. I don't know. I recently saw a news... Um, I'm not sure when it happened, but it was something that happened in America. Two boys, they plotted to kill their parents. 
they were teenagers. They plotted to kill their father and their mother because they wanted to um, get the insurance money. And these are parents that love them and give them everything. You understand? But what must be missing there is that parent-child relationship. For a child to get up and say they want to kill their parents, something is wrong. So, yes, work. <coughs> but when your work becomes a means of destroying your family, it's no longer good work. And mm -hmm. if you try and get somewhere else that can give you enough time to spend with your, to, to, to stay with your family, to stay with your children, to educate your children, you will be a happier person tomorrow. Because you've seen examples where some parents have made so much money and the children come along and squander all the money and everything is lost. So work, yes, work, try and work hard and earn a good living to support the family. But don't sacrifice the education and upbringing of the children on the platter of making money. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Harry. I think this has been uh, very thought-provoking. Um, parents first, we have a Facebook. I see someone saying, how do I get the contact of the speaker? We have a Facebook uh, group at Parents First. I'm sure if you check the chat, you'll see it all at Parents First. So if you have questions, you can take it there. Um, we would be doing this monthly. And then hopefully every time you get to address one or two things that might interest you, I think one of the things I find interesting here is you really have to come up with who you are as, an, as a father or your own personal philosophy. You have to review, just like the person asking what time do you share with your children. You have to know your children. You have to know what's happening in your family. And then, then I think only then can you know how to apply these tips you've been given um, because they are here, we will share the slides too. We will share the slide at parents first. I don't know. Oh, yes, it's been posted. We will share the slides at parents first. So if you have questions, um, if you need uh, directions, come there. And then um, I'm very grateful. I was hoping somebody would bring it out of your mouth <laughs> that you, you touch the Jaguar syndrome um, and the whole... I think it just negates that very first point where you said be available. I think I think that's just it, availability. So if you can find a way to be available, like you can outsource your push-ups. So if you need to do this, you probably just need to be your family and take care of them. And what it looks like, I'm sure it's different for everybody, but we would love to see how you apply it to yours. Mr. Henry, mm -hmm. thank you for being here. This was... Another fantastic time. I'm sure the men. And somebody commented, I must praise that men actually attended. Like, fantastic. Like, yes. fantastic. <laughs> I'm happy for you guys. Like, I'm happy. Somebody actually commented and said, oh, men attended. So um, we, we thank you for what you are able to share with us. And I'm sure this would be the beginning of new learnings and, you know, activities in our lives and in our families so thank you guys we're on facebook we would have every um last saturday it is last saturday of the month so we will communicate what the next topic is and we'll be happy to have you all on board thank you for being here all right thank you thank you everyone